Prince, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to rank all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. If you don't know, she's my favorite author and her new book, Malibu Rising, just released. I've had a chance to read it and so I want to go ahead and tier rank all of her books and let you know which ones I recommend, which ones I don't, and tell you my favorites from least favorite to my most favorite. Let me just say, it was not easy. So her debut novel, Forever Interrupted, released in 2013, and I rated this story four out of five stars. This is not a happily ever after, but um, at the very beginning of the novel, you have two characters that meet on New Year's Day. They instantly have a connection. They end up getting married very quickly, but then shortly after they get married, the husband gets hit while he's out riding his bike. He's hit and killed on impact, and this follows the grief of Elsie as she is getting over um, the loss of the love of her life, but also she is meeting her mother-in-law for the very first time. So she's dealing with being a widow, dealing with her mother-in-law who she has never met. If you're looking for a good cry, this one might be a good one to pick up. Her next book, After I Do, I have talked about several times because this is a book I reach to read again and again. I have reread it several times. So After I Do released in 2014, and this is about a married couple that seemingly is having a lot of arguments. Everything isn't as great as it was in the beginning. So they decide to have a year off. Like basically they're going their separate ways for a year and then they will reconnect after that year is over and decide what to do from there. You follow the main female character as she is taking a year off from her marriage and kind of finding herself and deciding if she really wants to continue in this marriage and what is the best path forward. Um, like I said, I reread this often so that can tell you how much I like it, but I rated this story five out of five stars. Maybe in Another Life, released in 2015, I rated this story five out of five stars as well. This tells the story of Hannah, who she's a little bit older, um, but she doesn't really know what she wants to do in her life. Um, she ends up moving to her hometown back in Los Angeles, and one night she goes out with her friend Gabby to a bar, and she's partying at the bar. She ends up bumping into an old boyfriend from high school, and at midnight she has to decide who to go home with. Is she going to go home with her friend Gabby or is she going to go home with her friend Ethan? Well in this book she lives out both of those decisions so you get to see you know what are the repercussions of that. What if she went home with Gabby? What would happen if she went home with Ethan? what would happen. And what's interesting about this is it kind of is like makes you think about your life and if you've ever made a certain decision but you've always wondered what would have happened if you made the different decision, this book explores that. So if you like like A Midnight Library by Matt Haig and stories like that, I think you would like this one. Her next book, One True Loves, released in 2016 and I rated this story five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book. If you like love triangles, if you don't like love triangles, I highly recommend you pick this up. This is actually my first book that I ever read by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I'm so freaking happy that I did. Um, I really enjoyed this story about a woman who gets married to this guy that's like the perfect guy. They have the perfect marriage. Everything is great but on their one year wedding anniversary, her husband gets an opportunity of a lifetime to go out and shoot this like area. He's like a photographer and stuff like that. Like think National Geographic. He gets this like once in a lifetime chance to go do that. So he goes and his plane crashes and he dies. Um, so obviously she's dealing with a lot of grief. She moves home, she's living with her parents and she starts working at her parents' store and she bumps into an old friend from high school and then things develop between those two characters and now they are engaged to be married and she's happy once again. The night of her engagement dinner, things take a turn. Her husband is has been found and now she has to decide what decision she's going to make. Is she going to go with her husband? Is she going to know with this new guy? Like who is she as a person? Which option is better for her? Who does she love? Does she only have one true love? 
Those are her more contemporary romance stories, I would say. Um, Forever Interrupted really isn't as romantic as these, but these are classic, great contemporary romance stories. Jump into her historical fiction novels. So the first one was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and I did have this one a while ago when I read it, but this is about the star from like old Hollywood named Evelyn Hugo that hires this budding journalist to come write Evelyn's life story. A lot of readers attribute this to being the book that put Taylor Jenkins Reid on the map. I disagree because I've read all of her previous books before this one but I'm so glad this author was introduced to so many new readers because of this book. But this one tells the story of an old Hollywood star named Evelyn Hugo, and she is telling her story, her life story, um, about all of these guys that she dated and married. And because everyone's always wondered, you've dated, you've married all of these men, who was your love? Who did you fall in love with? Who were you in love with? What happened? How did all of these relationships go? And trying to find out like who her one true love was as well. Tells her story of her seven husbands to this young journalist and you get to find out that maybe there's more to the story that meets the eye. Absolutely love this. Cried. Loved it. Um, Evelyn Hugo will always be like this real person in my head. And yeah, this is like so good, you guys. Then a lesser known title. It is a short story. It is called Evidence of the Affair. And I don't know if it's only available on like Audible or something like that, but it came out in 2018. It's only like 65 pages or somewhere. It's like super short, but I highly recommend you pick it up and read it because it's really, really good. It's a short story. It's told completely in letter format. So you have one woman writing this guy and this one guy writing back to her. So the one woman finds out that her husband is having an affair. So she writes the guy, the husband of the woman that his wife, that her husband is having an affair with. Does that make sense? So you have like two couples that are dealing with some infidelity and they're writing letters back and forth between each other. And it's just, it's very, very interesting. And I enjoyed it so much that as soon as I was done listening, I went right back in and listened to it again. I also adore this cover. I want to try to get the book in paperback. I have seen pictures of the paperback, but I haven't been able to find the paperback anywhere. I think it's like an Amazon originals or something like that. Yeah, I definitely want a copy for my Taylor Jenkins Reid collection and I would love to read it again. It's a great filler if you're in the mood for some Taylor Jenkins Reid and she hasn't released anything new. Definitely don't want to skip it if you're a huge Taylor Jenkins Reid fan. All right, next up was Daisy Jones and the Six. And I know this was a lot of people's like least favorite Taylor Jenkins read. I really liked this one though. I'm a huge fan or especially like in high school, I was a huge, huge fan of the Rolling Stone magazine. And that's what this felt like. It was told completely in interview format. Um, but the audiobook is like a full cast. So I highly recommend if you want to try this out, you try out the audiobook version of it. Um, and it just talks about this band and like the 70s and this girl Daisy joins the band and just kind of like why they broke up and what happened. And like I said, it's completely interview format. So there's a lot of characters. So um, knowing that it was told in interview format, I definitely suggest um, listening to it, which is what I did. And I rated it five out of five stars. And that brings us to Taylor Jenkins Reid new release. Malibu Rising, which is also a historical fiction novel. It takes place in like the mid 50s, but also the early 80s, which I absolutely freaking loved. Um, it all takes place in Malibu. And the majority of the story takes place at this one address in Malibu. So you follow four siblings as they grow up in Malibu. Um, you get to learn a little bit of their parents' backstory and then you get to learn like how they were raised and stuff like that. Um, but then the main storyline I would say is the night of this big party, this river like summer party that always happens every single summer. It's not like a party that 
like invites are sent out to, you just kind of know what's happening and you just show up if you know where Nina's house is. Um, I really, really liked this one. There was just like a little something. So I ended up rating this like 4.5 stars, but that's just me being like super freaking picky. I was really worried because a lot of people weren't enjoying this and I'm not sure why. I think because they weren't liking the flashbacks to the parents chapters, but I really thought thought that they made like a big difference in the story and I think that the party aspects of the story were my least favorite parts so if they didn't have the flashbacks and it was only the party I think I would have liked this a lot less I really liked seeing where they came from and who their parents were and a little bit about the parents relationship and stuff like that but I really really liked this now it's time for me to rank the books from my least favorite to my most favorite. So as you can see, just on my ratings alone, this was really, really hard to rank. So I love all of these. They're all my number one. My least favorite goes to Forever Interrupted. It was her debut and I think it doesn't fit into any other category. It's not like one of those contemporary romance. It's not a historical fiction. It just seems very different than anything else she's written and it was her debut. So her own her writing only got exponentially better from here. Next up is Maybe in Another Life. Um, I just don't think I really loved this story. I rated it five out of five stars. But this type of story, that alternate reality, you know, type thing isn't my favorite. It's not my favorite premise. Um, so that's why it comes in this low. Next up would be evidence of the affair. And the only reason it's as low as it is, is because it was super, super short. Um, but for what it was and how short it was, it was so good and I definitely want to get a paper copy or a physical copy so I can read it again and again. Okay, then it's going to be Malibu Rising, which like I said, it was pretty much rounded up to a five stars. Um, so really anything here and above is like god tier for me so Malibu Rising is next I did have those slight few problems like the party aspect wasn't my favorite but I don't think that I would have enjoyed it as much if the party aspects weren't in here and shockingly the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which was one of my favorite books of the year the year that I read it then Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, I really liked the format of being told all throughout um, interviews. It reminded me a lot of the Rolling Stones um, interviews and articles that I read like all throughout high school and college. Um, I have a lot of fond memories of that. I also loved the audiobook experience with the full cast and it also reminded me a lot of that movie with Lady Gaga, um, A Star is Born, and I watched that shortly after reading this and they're just so interconnected in my mind that that's kind of like what I picture when I think about this book. So I know it's a lot of nostalgia there for this book and that's why it's so high. Now we come down to my top two, which is One True Loves and After I Do. So After I Do is the one that I have reread the most and One True Loves is the first book I ever read by her. So obviously I rated both of these five out of five stars, but in second place, One True Loves. And in first place, After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I adore everything about this book. I love that it follows a married couple and like deals with like real marriage issues and I just love what happens during their time apart but also it's so relatable in the very beginning why what leads up to them taking a break and like I said I cry when reading this I usually pick this up to read at my very as my very first read 
at the beginning of every year because I just love it so much. So yeah, so this is my favorite book of all time by Taylor Jenkins Reid. But really, guys, these books are so good. They're all my favorites. I recommend all of them. But yeah, I just wanted to share my ranking with you guys and tell you a little bit about my favorite author and her books. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.